Hello and welcome to another COVID-19 weekly JKA Karate Kata Seminar. Tonight's kata is Unsu. Uh, unsu means cloud hands or parting the clouds, which uh, comes from these a couple of these movements. It looks like this. Um, it's considered to be a very old kata, probably of Chinese origin. Uh, the kata is very difficult, very complex, and very dynamic. It is probably the most popular tournament kata. And uh, so the tournament the competitors get a lot of points for speed and athleticism. But in a lot of cases, and watch them because in a lot of cases they shortcut the movements and make they kind of half do some of the movements. So you have to watch to see how much the people complete the movements because this is good. this has a lot to do with how good their score is going to be. So as we always do, we'll do the kata to count first before I get into the analysis. And I have Mike Jacobs to help us do that. Und so, ich, nie, chi, go, lo, chi, ich, nie, san, chi, go, lo, chi, chat, ich, nie, san, Chi, go, look, chi, hachiku, ju, i, ni, san, chi, go, i, ni, san, chi, go, look, i, ni, san, chi, go, i, ni, Sun Chi Go Lo Chi Hatch Hare Lore Okay, come a little closer. First 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 movements. First Bow and in place, take Kamai. This, this is the uh, ready position for this kata. First movement is largely uh, symbolic, part in the clouds movement. Then Keito Uke and Ipon Ukite. And Keito Uke. In place and ipon nukite. And again. And ipon nukite. Okay, as I, as I said, the first movement from here, this position, this is the in breath, come very close to your, your mouth with your hands, then out breath. And make sure you're going straight out, palms facing outward. This is the ax jaw position. Okay. Uh, as I said, this movement is probably mostly symbolic because it's a kind of a symbol of the kata party in the clouds, assumedly to to so that you have clear vision of, of everything, maybe your inner soul or something. But uh, variously, some people say that this is a block to a face or stomach punch. Of course, if you're going to block this way, if, it's going to, if you're not going to get hit in the mouth, you would have to block the loop off to the side and then grab the wrist and pull to the side. Um, okay, so that's one, one interpretation of Bunkai there. Then, next movement, this one, and, th and this first one must come very quickly. Okay? Um, in the, but first, 
One of my pet peeves. From here, there's no reason to make any noise other than incidental, okay? When you come to here, your arms are moving in an arc. You don't have to slap your head, your hips. This is WTF style sound effects to make it cool. Okay, so I meant WKF. Okay, so from here, just come to here. You don't need to slap yourself. If you're sharp, you'll be impressive. Then next movement, make sure that this one pivots at the elbow. So meaning is. So either somebody's grabbing or, the, or you're blocking a punch, okay? This Kato chicken head wrist block. So you only have to take the arm back a little bit and the strike is downward to this inner, the nerves inside the groin here, okay? It's very important that as you, as you, and you, you can do it slow to start, you want to kind of relax the stance a little and squeeze it closed again to make some snap in the hip. In the old days, they didn't do so much hip snapping there, but, uh, but now it's sort of essential. Uh, also, I'm not sure if the, if the way the technique was uh, executed has changed, but in best karate, they describe this as striking to chuda, but if you strike to chuda, you're gonna have to extend the elbow. Okay, so, but the modern interpretation is striking downward. Okay, so from here, one. Then this one is, is a sweep to cat stance. Okay, then again, then again, sweep slowly and then quick. Okay, next movement. Right leg forward, castings. Each. Switching from knee. Furodashi to front stance. Sun. Chi. Heike. Okay, this set, uh, uh, Bukai symbol. Somebody, somebody's, something's coming. Because each time you're moving into the opponent, you're slicing, punches coming, you're slicing inside the arm and ending with your hand in, in the armpit of your opponent. Okay? Important thing is, people do this, bam, 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 really fast. So watch for the typical mistake going from Sochin stance to front stance. Watch my back heel. Make sure that that back heel is stable and the toes turn forward. Get your pivoting on your heel to make those movements. But otherwise, yes, they must be done in fast sequence. And this is one of the things about Unsu that makes it so hard because people try to do the movements so quickly that oftentimes if you did it in slow motion, you would say, ew, but basics don't look so good. But because everything goes by in a blur, sometimes it's still okay with judges. You have to keep your eyes open. Next set of movements. Each knee. Okay, just up uh, okay, and next one. Some. Okay, I'll have I'll have uh, something might do this as I describe it. First thing, from right leg forward. A lot of people, the, the medium's movement is that a person's coming punching to Jodan. You have to move into the opponent along the same line as you go down, which means your front knee must go forward into, into the, this dropping position. Now, other thing you can see from his position is that the important thing is the right arm, which I can't see, you're going to back up. The right arm, the fingers must be well turned inward because uh, otherwise you, you can uh, break your wrist putting it down. Okay. 
Okay. So the meaning here is the opponent punched and his head went by the opponent's torso. Next movement also, when you kick, uh, kick again, when you kick your hips should come right off the ground. Okay. Next movement, the opponent's trying to make reverse punch or punch again. Again, you have to a little bit scooch your body into the opponent so that, so that you can move in on him to make the kick. Important thing about the next movement is staying very low. Okay, so this is hey, yeah, me. So this is one of the most difficult movements in the kata, and certainly I can't do it right, but the trick is you've got to push off, and you should be down here, all the way on the ground, with your heels down, and then go straight out. So only, only the most flexible and strongest people can really do this movement correctly. Um, so the mistake that a lot of people make, maybe you can demonstrate the mistake, is they go off the line in the first Mwashigiri. Instead of the right leg going forward, they just kind of flop down onto, onto on the right foot will come in, they'll just kind of flop down. So this is putting, putting him too close to the line. His, his torso is not going to the right enough, and he's not moving straight into the opponent. So it's very important. It's very important that as you start the movement that you go into the opponent. Do not just flip sideways and hit the ground in place, because your upper body's got to go over there, and your, your hip has to go directly in. That's why your knee lands here, not this way. Okay. Next one. From here. So, say, Ruto, Uchi, ox jaw hand strike, this one is a uh, Keito Gegen and Teisho Uke, uh, uke in the bottom. Two. Three. And, and my gear. And the blocks of Uke and the reverse punch. And the Haito Uchi. My gear. So two Uke and reverse punch. This one. This is set, this is supposed to be a strike with both hands. So assumedly there's a, maybe two people punching the face and you duck under and, and, and hit them both away, push them both away from you. Again, I wonder if if this uh, movement is largely ceremonial, symbolic. This is this this particular movement, whether, whether it's the first one or the, the second one. It doesn't seem to be uh, that practical from here. So next one, this this is a block face punch. This one is Teisho Gaidan Uke. So assumingly two opponents coming from one from each side. Teisho Uke can be done this way or this way. Most people are done are do it this way. But if you have one finger out, that's fine. I don't believe it makes a difference. Okay, then cross and do again. Okay, then haito uchi to tempo. Okay, my ear. Point coming from the back, come to here, and go. Okay, then repeat that movement. This movement, tournament people almost invariably do not they kind of just switch the feet. They don't come, they're supposed to come back, all the way back to here, before you make the next one. All the way back. Okay? And some do a fair job with that. A lot of them short step that. They don't quite get it because they're all the way back because they're trying to go too fast. They also don't come to here. They come kind of, kind of, Bow legged. Okay. But
But the one that really gets uh, bastardized is, is this one. From here, you are supposed to come to the next movement. You are supposed to come to here. Okay? Here, and then go down. But almost nobody does that. They, they, they whip around and they come to here because they can do it quicker. They don't come all the way to here. They come to here. They don't pick up the knee all the way and they don't turn their bodies all the way. But when you watch the instructors teach it, of course they say bring your knee all the way up. So I find this curious that, you know, is the kata going to evolve? It's like a mutiny. You know, if, uh, if the instructors are all saying, you must come to here, but they only come to here, effectively, where the knee is almost going to be. Um, will the kata evolve to that? Just because that's simpler, more uh, efficient, to make the turn, turn, pum pum, and get your leg down quick. We'll see. Next set of movements. Okay, so this is just Kamai, stand you ready. And then Fig and Keiran Tsuki. Next is a uh, is a uh, ukezuki okay done and again quickly one two okay then tateshutoki furudachi then keisho hasamiuchi then mai tekomi reverse punch and the lunge punch Can you ready? So this is this is not this is basically going back to the beginning of the kata again. So most of the people they lower the center of gravity and they bring, bring this hand up and they bring this hand palm down, palm down to about here. Okay. In the in the, in the sense of Nakayama, it was not clear what he was doing here. He kind of, because he kind of did it quick, but the other, but back in the day, some of the instructors were doing two hands. One, one, two. Okay, so I couldn't tell what sense of Nakayama was doing because he went really quick. You know, kind of like this. So I don't know whether he was doing one or one, two. But this is another one of these movements that sort of where people, if you watch a video, something like Kanazawa doing this kata. He goes one, two, three, very clearly, all, all slow until the punch. Uh, so this example of variations kind of creeping in, in the middle, where if you look at the old late 50s videos, they didn't necessarily do it that way, but then some people were obviously were doing that variation. But from then on, from best pratyan, no, it was just one hand. Okay, so the meaning is, regardless of which way you do it, you're trying to you're trying to make his eyes go up, and then you punch low, get it on level, maybe to the uh, to the nerves in the groin. Okay, then the next two. Meaning is uh, he's coming kicking, and you block, and again punch low, and you block, and again punch low. Okay, so those are block punch same time. Okay, okay, it's okay. Then, take shoot okay, so chin stance. Okay, take show asami uchi. Okay? Now, the reason it's called Asami Uchi is because
because the bunkai means you blocked his wrist, then you turn, so he's like this, and you come up under the elbow. Then, pump into this guy. So there's a lot of kicking, low kicking. Low kicking in this kata. But kata is done with Teisho touching each other. Then, Gyakuzuki Oizuki. The Gyakuzuki is done in transit. So don't, uh, from here, don't punch then step forward. Just punch as you're stepping forward, as your body weight's moving forward. So, this movement, because it's my kick only, front, thrust kick, you pull to the center of your body. Just like this. Whereas by side, because Kekomi was to the side, pulling to the our side of our body. But similar, similar concept, there's a different direction. Continue. Okay, next movement. Get it on the right, keep it at your stance. Haito Jonanuke Shuto Geranuke Haito Jonanuke Kakuzuki From me From here important thing about the, the two Gatan is because you're turning into the technique make sure that you don't go like this Okay, but that you, same theme as, as many of our seminars, that, you, that your weight, your hip stays square, and you wait till the end to twist the hip. That is the snap that, that makes it impressive. If you turn throughout, it will just be squishy. Okay, so you have the amber eye, twist the hip at the end. Yoriyashi. Then again, next one, get a right open hand, but must go this way. Twist the hip at the end. Okay. Yoriyashi. Okay. Tate shuto ke. Such an stance. Furodachi stance. Okay, so don't make it too wide. A little, little bit of just the left foot, okay. Now, in, back again, in a, since in Nakayama's video, it looked like he was doing this from Kibirachi stance. The hand moved, and then he went, no, yeah, he didn't move the front foot at all in preparation. He just went like that. In other old videos, like since the Kanazawa, he did it from Kokutsudachi stance. Okay. So, so my, I'm not sure why they went to Furodachi, but both Kibirachi and Kokutsudachi means you've got to twist farther. So it's a little easier from uh, Furodachi because you know, your body's already starting to turn in the direction of the jump. Okay, so next movement, don't do yet, is uh, Mikazuki Gary. Uh, crescent kick, so assumedly you block, one interpretation is block the punch, you can kick him in the chest or the head as you go around, then you do shirogiri to the back to, keep, to uh, hit the, the uh, same opponent, go, I'm sorry, to the opponent behind you. Important thing about this one is you like uh, uh, Kung Fu Show, the back, the ball, you're up on the ball of foot in the back, your back line must be straight, your, your fingertips are turned inward, and all your weight is, and most of your weight is on the right knee, right leg. Next one. Next one. And next one. And go.
So the jump in Unsu, unlike Kung Fu Show, where you, you make the jump very shallow, and they used to try to make the Bunkai the same, but they abandoned the idea of a back kick in, in uh, Kung Fu Show. But in Unsu, you're supposed to jump high, back kick in the air, bring the leg back in, and back down again. Almost nobody does it that way. Uh, if you watch old videos of Sensei Yahara, he's one of the few that could do it correctly, that jump. Um, this move, these movements, just like Niji Shiho, Tabuki Makiyotoshi Uke, means a wrist curling falling block, followed by Keisho Uchi, Wase, both. From this position, all you have to do is block with the left hand and pull to the hip and go and then block with the right hand and pull to the hip and go. Same as Niju Shiho. But, same as Niju Shiho, there's mutiny on the bounty again because so many people have their own idea how to do this block. This series of blocks and, and strikes. And, and I'm not going to go into it in the same depth, but basically, at, as, as with Niju Shio, some people putting the extra, extra block in with the left hand before making the right hand. And some people are doing the around the world, then block with the right hand. It's curious to me why this is one of the movements that, uh, <laughs> that they're just so tolerant about not standardizing, but each instructor seems to have his, his uh, pet, his favorite. Okay. So anyway, two, two of those, one, two, then this is a feeling of uh, get your weight down and the block, block and content. Almost back to basics. Okay. Okay. So that pretty much wraps up Unsu. Unsu is a uh, difficult, difficult kata to do. Okay. Next Friday, we are going to do Goju Shiho Show. So, in the meantime, train hard and train smart, and we'll see you next time.